Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence and this is my channel about the transition from gas-powered cars to electric cars from the perspective of a first-time EV owner. In this video, I'd like to talk about something that's missing in the 2019 Kia Niro EV. If you're anything like me, a little bit of a gadget freak, I like to know about how things work and what things are going on. And the Nero, although it has a touchscreen and some information on the cluster and all sorts of really interesting stuff, it's missing some more technical details. Well, there's something you can do about that and it doesn't cost a ton of money. It's actually less than 25 bucks and you can do it in about five minutes. If you want to find out what that is and how it happens, stick around. I'll let you know in 10 seconds. When I got this car, the 2019 Kia Niro EV, this is the SX Touring version, I was really happy with the amount of stuff that's included in the car and the amount of technology. The information that's available throughout the menus of the cluster as well as in the central touchscreen is quite interesting, but the more I get to know the car, the more I find that I'd like to know more about the details of what's going on technically and that includes minimum battery temperature, maximum battery temperature, what's the battery management system pulling or offering, what, what's the state of charge for real versus what's the state of charge as displayed on the screen, amongst other things. Now, there's a post on a Facebook group, the Kia Niro EV Quebec Facebook group, and I'd like to say thank you to this person, put it up on the screen here somewhere, because they showed a screen of an application on their cell phone that displayed information on the Nero EV. And I wasn't aware that somebody had put together a customization for the application called Torque Pro. Torque Pro is something that most people use for a gas powered car, but there's a really smart guy who created something called PID extensions or PIDs. And they are generally available for the Soul EV, but were modified for both the Kona and Nero EV as well. So if you're driving a first generation Kia Soul EV or the new 2020 Kia Soul EV, a Hyundai Kona electric or a Kia Niro EV, then you're in luck because you can use this app with a little Bluetooth dongle that sticks into your OBD2 port and get a whole bunch of information and it allows you to customize what you see on the screen. So let me show you how to download and set that up on your PC initially and transfer it over here to your cell phone and then how to set it up on your cell phone and what you can actually see with it. It's been really interesting to learn the process, very simple, and once you know, it's literally a five minute thing. There is written documentation, but being visual as I am, I'd much rather see something in a video, so I think some of you might appreciate it. So here we go. Just a little note, I wanted to make sure that it's clear that I can't be held responsible for anything that I'm showing you in this video. You are entirely responsible for trying any of these things that are described. In order to get the information out of the car, you're going to require two things. The first thing is a little OBD2 reader, and the next thing is a software on your cell phone that links to it. So the first thing to do is to head over to Amazon and purchase the OBD2 reader that I was suggested to buy because I know it works in the Nero EV. And here it is. It's the VPeak OBD2 reader. I'll put a direct link to it in the description below. Once you've purchased and received your OBD2 reader from Amazon, then all you have to do is head over to your car to plug it in. The OBD2 port of the Kia Niro EV is on the driver's side on the bottom left of the dash. So you walk up to your car, and when you look under the bottom left near the dead pedal, you'll notice that there's this little connector, and that is where the reader plugs in. Both the OBD2 port and the reader itself are keyed. In other words, you can't put them in backwards, upside down, or whatever. So just make sure that you've got to flip the right side up and plug it in. The next thing you're going to need is the software on your cell phone. Now I have Android, so I'm showing you the Play Store. What you need to do is look up Torque Pro. It's just under $5 and install it on your phone. In order for the Torque Pro app to be able to speak to your car through the OBD2 port reader that you purchased on Amazon, the app requires something called PIDs, PIDs. These are specific files that tell the app how to communicate with the car through the reader. Fortunately, a really smart person, going by the alias of Jeju Soul, has created PIDs for a wide variety of electric and plug-in vehicles. I'll put a direct link to the Hyundai Kona Electric and Nero EV section of this website in the description below. 
Now in this section is where you'll find the PIDs folder and that's where you'll find the files that are required to do what we're about to do. There are a variety of files in here, you can use them all like I have in my installation, but for the sake of this example, I'll only show you how to do the first one. Instead of simply clicking on the file and opening it up, I suggest that you right click on the file and click open a new tab. This way you can easily return to the other tab to get back to where you were before. You'll notice that once you've clicked on it, that the file isn't actually a file, it's just information on the screen. But that's just how GitHub works. So essentially, you have to click on the raw button, which will bring up the code that goes into the file we're about to create. So select all of the text that you see on the screen, right click, select copy, and then open notepad. This is where you'll paste it in. And click file. Save as, select the location that's appropriate that you'll remember where you put the file, and then copy the name of the file as it was indicated on the previous web page. Paste it into the file name section, and then click save. That's it, you're done. You've created your first PID file. Simply repeat these steps if you want to do the same thing for all of the other files to have all of the options available in the Torque Pro application. Now you may have your own way of copying files over to your cell phone's hidden folders, but if you do, simply note the location of where you need to paste the PID files that you've just created. In this case, I have an Android phone and I use FX File Explorer, so I'll browse to the location on my network where I've stored my PID files, and I'll copy them so I can put them on my phone. Once I've copied the files from my network location, then I need to browse to the folder where Torque Pro reads these files. The Torque Pro folder itself is hidden, so you'll need to unhide that in whatever file browser you're using. In FX File Explorer, all I have to do is click on the menu button on the top right and then select Show Hidden. Once you've activated Show Hidden Files, you'll notice that several folders appear, but the one in question that we're looking for is .torque. When you open the .torque folder on your cell phone, you will not see the extended PIDs folder. This is something that has to be created. Now in my particular case, I've already installed my PID files, so I do have the extended PIDs folder. Once the extended PIDs folder has been created on your phone, then it's just a matter of pasting in the PIDs files that were created. Now as I mentioned before, my files are already installed and created, so they're already in here. So I won't actually be pasting these files in here again. Now that the hard part is done, it's just a question of telling Torque Pro that you want to use the PIDs that you've installed on the phone. This is really easy. Open up the Torque Pro app, click on the gear icon on the bottom left, select Settings, tap on Manage Extra PIDs slash Sensors. Now since I've already selected my extra PIDs, you won't have as many listed as I do, but you can ignore that fact. On the top right, tap on the three dots, then tap on Add Predefined Set. The nice thing about having used the file names that were on the website is that they're all listed in order 1 through 5. So simply tap on the PID file you want to add, and it'll get added, and then repeat the same step of tapping on the three dots and adding the next PID file until you've added all the ones you wanted to add. And now it's just a matter of tapping the back button until you get back to the main Torque Pro screen. Now you may notice on the top right that it says profile not set up. This isn't a required step, but if you want that to stop flashing red, it's a simple process. Click on the gear icon on the bottom left, and then tap on Vehicle Profile. Now since Torque Pro is an app that was originally designed for a gas-powered car, there isn't anything that's really useful in this screen. All you really want to do is enter the profile name at the top right, and you're done. Now that you've got your OBD2 Bluetooth adapter connected to your car, you've installed Torque Pro as well as the PID files, how do you get it all to work together? The first thing you're going to need to do is to pair the OBD2 Bluetooth adapter to your cell phone. So head over to your Bluetooth settings and scan for the device. You'll see OBD2, tap on it, it'll request the pin which is 1234, press OK. Once it's paired, it'll be in your list. Head back out and then select Torque. The Torque Pro app will open up and you'll see at the top that there's some flashing symbols. Once it's connected to your Bluetooth adapter, you'll have the flashing car. And then all you really need to do is select real-time information, which is on the bottom right. 
And the first thing you'll see is a page that's not of any use for a person with an electric car. It's a bunch of gas dials. Now, we can take these off. It's uh, something that can be done quite easily. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Swipe to the right, get to the blank page that's there. Press and hold anywhere on the screen. And at the bottom, select Add Display. There are several meters and graphs and things that you can choose from here. I'm going to show you how to do one, and then you can experiment with the others as you see fit. Now, I've played with these a little bit, and I really like the half dial meter, which is the third one down. Once you've tapped on it, you'll notice that there's a long list of things that you can add here. Many of them, or most of them, are actually from the PID files that were added. So we'll start at the top. We'll look at some of these items, but we'll choose one that's more interesting, and that would probably be, let's see, the battery DC voltage. Let's look at that. Once you've tapped on that, then you've got the different sizes that are available. I found that small is a really good size, but let me show you medium to start. Once you tap on it, it appears on the screen surrounded by an orange square. All you have to do is tap hold and then move it to where you want it to be on the screen. Once you release it, it's on your screen and is going to display the information real time. Now I found that the battery voltage is interesting because the higher the state of charge, the higher the voltage of the battery is, and that gives you a good idea as to why your car is more powerful the higher the charge of the car because it's got more voltage to output. You can add another item by pressing and holding anywhere that's empty on the screen, select add display, and then choose any other meter that you would like or graph or whatever. Uh, for the sake of this uh, particular example, I'll use the dial needle, uh, although it's not one that I really like. And we'll go down to battery maximum temperature. And we'll tap on that and I'll select small and move it underneath by tapping, holding, and dragging to the position and then releasing. That gives you an idea of how you can set those up. The next thing you can do is if you're unhappy with one of them, like I don't like the battery max temperature to be on the full dial, you can just press and hold it, and then you get the option to make a change to it by selecting, let's say, display configuration, and we will change the display type, and then choose a half dial meter that I find is more appropriate and shows you the information in a more efficient way. Now you can also change the size in a similar way by pressing and holding, select display configuration, change size, and then select large if you'd like. You can also move it at this point. Let's just move that over a little bit. And there you go. And if you wanted to just move it, you can press and hold, select move display, and then move it to somewhere on the screen that you find appropriate. You can customize this the way you like. You can try the various meters, dials, and graphs that you find appropriate. But I've already got something set up, and let me show you what that is. So I'm going to swipe right. And now you've got a page that gives you a lot of information as to what's happening in my car right now. I'm parked, so you're not going to see a lot of things happening other than the amperage that's being drawn by my heating system right now. The top uh, left of the screen, I've got battery minimum and maximum temperature. I've also got the battery management or BMS capacitor that shows the voltage that's being used or that's available. Uh, you've got maximum regen. So if I was driving the car and I let off the accelerator pedal, you would see that value change depending on how much regenerative braking the car is doing. The max power is how much the maximum power has been drawn as I press on the accelerator pedal. Then you've got energy draw. That's the number of kilowatts that the car is using live. Right now my heater is on, so it's drawing a little bit of power. If I turn up my heating to a higher temperature, you'll see that the number of kilowatts goes up as well as the amperage. Now let me just turn that back down because that's really loud. There we go. 
And then the number of volts in the battery. Now I like the battery voltage uh, gauge because the higher the state of charge, the higher the number of volts. So right now there's 355-ish volts available. Uh, when my car is 90% or higher, it shows 400 volts, which is interesting because I was under the impression that this battery in the Kia Niro EV was 356 volts. So I've got to look into why that's showing that information that way. But all in all, that's how you use Torque Pro. Quite simple, and once you've done it the first time, starting from scratch, it would literally take five minutes to set this all up. As I mentioned in my last video about the dedicated electric car wheels, the Fast EV01 Plus, I said that I would have a new t-shirt quiz and it's time to do that. So let me get that t-shirt on right now. So here it is, the latest t-shirt in the t-shirt quiz. And no, it's not another Rick and Morty t-shirt. Finally, I have something a little bit different. If you know what this t-shirt is about, then please put it in the comment section below. And if you're the first person to get it right, then I will mention you at the end of my next video. Now, let me get back into my regular shirt and continue with the actual subject of this video. Something I forgot to mention earlier in this video is that the OBD2 dongle, as well as the application Torque Pro or Leaf Spy, Soul Spy, or some of the others that are available out there, can help somebody who's looking to purchase a used electric car and verify the state of health of the battery. Because a new car has 100% capacity and lets you drive the full distance that it promises from the manufacturer, that doesn't mean that five, six, seven years down the road that the car is gonna do the same distance on a full charge because it's normal for a car to have battery degradation. Now, some cars will degrade more than others. The Nissan Leaf is a car that comes to mind because the Nissan Leaf has absolutely no thermal management for the battery. What that means is if the car is in a hot environment, and has received many fast charges, it's quite possible that the battery will have degraded to the point where it can lose a significant amount of range, 20, 30, 40%. Now, some of these batteries would still be under warranty, but you have to verify if the car is coming from the United States or Canada, if you're in Canada, and vice versa if you're in the United States. So with this application, you can plug it into the car, start up the app, verify the state of health, and it'll allow you to decide whether it's worth purchasing the car or not. I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far. I'm at about 1,400 subscribers now, which is fantastic in such a short amount of time. So a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far. And if you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button that looks kind of like that down below and click the notification bell to find out when new videos are posted. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. I do read them, I do answer comments, and I do note the suggestions for future videos. It's just a question of me lining up when I'll be doing those videos. So with that being said, thanks for watching.